Hello, DevNet. Uh, welcome to our session, Shift Left Security. Uh, Tomer and myself want to talk to you about why we think developers need to assume security responsibility of the application, and not just why we think it's important, but also how to do it. But before we jump into the details, let's first introduce ourselves. So my name is Ariel, as I said, I'm a product manager at Cisco Emerging Technologies Innovation Team. I uh, joined Cisco following the acquisition of Portshift, where I was the VP of product management and business development. Before that, I was leading the serverless security activities in Aqua Security, of the product management leading checkpoint, and some other points in my career. Tomer, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Ariel. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tomer Trim. I'm a software engineer here at Cisco at ETNI. I'm a software and um, back engineer uh, focusing on Kubernetes security. Uh, I joined Cisco about a year ago as part of the port shift acquisition. So shifting security left, I hope nobody feels uncomfortable from this uh, title, means that we want to introduce security checks and security work during the development and deployment phases. Why is it left? Because if you look at like the timelines of an application lifecycle, you design it, you develop it, then you deploy it and you run it. And we want to shift security, which was traditionally on the right-hand side with the runtime part, moving it all the way to the left, to the development and to the deployment phases. Now, why do we want to do that? Because early detection of security risk, while developers are still coding and writing their application are still designing and planning the deployment uh, configurations is much more efficient. You know, it's easier to detect, it's easier to fix, it's easy to replace, so it's much, it accelerates the process of taking corrective steps. It reduces the time to fix, and altogether you get a higher security value in a much more efficient way and shorter time perspective. Now, when we say shift left, what do we mean by that? So here we divide it to like three different phases. The first phase, which I think is pretty much the classical approach. This is where most of the development team are doing today, is we are in, we integrate the security scans, you know, whether it's code scanning or dependency scanning, into our IDEs or into our continuous integration pipeline tools. So whether we're using Jenkins or GitLab or using any other new modern, you know, uh, it's continuous integration, it's very easy and pretty much straightforward to add code scanner or dependency scanner into this uh, pipeline. A more advanced approach is by also taking these scans one step further uh, under the assumption that, you know, there are also deployment files. And even today when everything is as a code and, you know, we have infrastructure as a code and everything is pretty much codified, you know, we also want to extend this code scan also to the deployment files. Why is it important? Because this is where we can find, you know, overly permissive permissions. We can find secrets which are kept in clear text. Uh, we can find the runtime configurations which are not meant to be there uh, and many other uh, element that worth noting before deployment happens. But a real shift left approach, and this is the main uh, focus of our session today, is talk about taking it one step further and really you know, giving the developers full responsibility on their application, even the runtime security. And this is where we think, you know, the most important part and where the, all the efforts in. And this is where we're going to invest uh, the big portion of this session. But before we start, let's first jump into just a quickly, you know, illustration of what do we mean by the classical approach. So as I described, CI phase, you know, we want to edit, you know, just when we build an image. Okay, if it's, you know, container image or like a Docker, uh, if it's, a, you know, any other application image, in the build process, we want to add some code scanning step. So it will allow to discover if there's any security vulnerabilities in the codes, like in known CVEs or high CVEs or just newly discovered CVEs. Uh, it will also help us to find and identify what are the fixed versions of those CVEs that can eliminate them. And also we can find some security best practices. Like if you build something with the wrong Docker file, wrong settings, or anything which can prevent you from potential security pitfalls. So, Tomer, please give us, show us a demo how does it look like in real life. Great, thank you, Ariel. Uh, so, let's head up to our first uh, demo. 
So in SecureCN, we build a CLI UTL for scanning a Docker image for, for vulnerabilities and for misconfigured Docker files. So in our example, uh, we'll build application. And the first thing that we want to do is to have a database. So we, uh, so in this case, we're using uh, Postgres and we just pick uh, an older version of Docker 9.4. And in this command, we'll scan this image uh, for vulnerabilities uh, and for Docker misconfiguration. So the command line will scan the image for vulnerabilities and print the vulnerabilities to the screen. In addition to that, the results will be sent to the SecureCN console, and then we can view it there for better graphic uh, interface. So as we can see, the image was scanned. And we see some critical vulnerabilities. Um, so it is highly recommended that the image that is used in production would not have any uh, critical vulnerabilities. And so let's head up to the security and console and see how this looks like in there. So in our in the security end, let's refresh the page. And we can see that the new entry is here. So here we can see our Postgres, and we can see that the version is 9.4. And we can see that there are three critical vulnerabilities. So if we'll click on the image, we can see the list of vulnerabilities. We can see that uh, we have three critical vulnerabilities, and we can drill down and can see uh, more details about the vulnerability. We can see the CVS, CVSS um, explanation about the vulnerability. And we can see that there is a fix available. So what we want to do, we want to upgrade uh, to the latest and greatest Postgres. So let's jump back to the command line. And instead of Postgres 9.4, we use the latest and greatest, we use 13. So now the image is scanned for vulnerabilities and Docker misconfigurations. And again, the results will be printed to the screen and will be sent to the CN for a deeper inspection. Um, so while the image is being, so you see that the image is scanned and now we can see that there are few, and um, so we have medical, medium uh, vulnerabilities, we have a high, but in this version, we don't have critical. So it's highly recommended uh, to use the latest and greatest uh, in terms of uh, image vulnerabilities. So we're also scanning the Docker file, and the results will be sent to the security end. So if we refresh the page, we see a new entry. So we have first we had the 9.4, now we have the 13. And we can see that there are no critical vulnerabilities and the amount of high vulnerabilities is also very low. And we can also go to the image itself and we can go to the CIS benchmark and we see, which is inspecting the Docker image. And we can see that uh, except for one warning, the image and the Docker file is pretty well uh, formed. Thank you, Tomer. And let's talk about how we shifting left even in the CD. So the continuous deployment that you can see on the left side of my screen um, is again, is how do we deploy our artifacts into the run in the production environment or into like a real environment. And here, you know, just we have in Helm the ability to, to do a dry run in Terraform web, the ability to create, see the plan. This is something that if you add the security checks into these stages, it allows you to get good visibility and potential pitfalls, which are not related to the code, but related to the metadata that container or any artifact generate with it. So if it, if it relates to like permissions uh, in the cloud account that you plan to deploy with this uh, deployment or privileges that are related to what container assume from the host or volumes which it mount, or if there's any access key or secret key or token, which is left plain in plain text and not hide, hidden in, in the relevant area. Um, issues like, uh, you know, 
any other security context with regard to the runtime, all of it can be discovered in this phase. And again, adding a right scan at this stage allow us to detect early uh, in the deployment lifecycle where the challenges are, what the problems are, and decide whether we must allow it or we can do fixes and minimize it before we realize it when it's already too late. So just like before, Tomer, please show us a demo. How's it look like in real life? Thank you, Ariel. Um, so let's see a demo. So let me explain about the setup. So we have Argo CD as our uh, deployment tool, and we have two applications here. The first one is Nginx, and the second one we'll, we'll talk about in a second. So um, we have an Nginx deployment if we want to deploy to our cluster. Um, so we can sync the deployment. And when we sync it, uh, Argo CD will install Nginx deployment to our cluster. But right before installing to the cluster, it will send the deployment file at the secure CN or inspection. And if the deployment is uh, safe, it will deploy it to the cluster. So we can see that if the Nginx was deployed. So let's jump to the secure CM console and we can see how, uh, how the inspection looks like. So under the CICD, on the CD page, let's click refresh and we see two deployments. We see the Nginx deployment and we see the main page. So let's jump to the secure CM, the, the, the Nginx deployment, and we can see a couple of things. So the deployment is scanned. So we are scanning three components of the deployment. We're scanning the security context, we're scanning secrets, and we're scanning the four permissions. So let's look on the security context. So in this case, we found that the risk of the security context is high because it is configured to allow privilege escalation on the container, which is not recommended. And and for, for the secret, we see that there are no uh, secrets configured in, in the deployment, and there are no permissions uh, configured. And we can see that the deployment was successful. Thank you, Tomer. And now let's focus on what real shift, shift, shifting security left mean, in our opinion. And shifting security left all the way mean that even the runtime, even the area which was traditionally handled and managed by security team is being moved to the developers. Uh, and the reason, again, come from the same principle that we discussed before. Developers are the one who know best, you know, if the application requires certain privileges, which service they want their application to be exposed to, and which service they want to expose to their service or to their application, whether they want an external exposure or only internal. In the internal, what microservices need to speak with each other. Now, there is no way that a security team can follow up with the rapid way of de new deployment and continuous deployment and changes and updates and so many developers pushing code to, produ to production. But in order to do that, and I hope you all agree with me, we need to have the right tools. We need to have the right set of tools in order to do that, to allow developers to define that. Because otherwise, of course, it's a nice idea, but cannot be implemented. And the concept that we want to show over here is to move into policy as a code, just like we move from you know configuration files to what we call today infrastructure as a code, so we codify everything around the application. We also want to codify the policy. So we want to create a policy in the way that developers can do, in the way developers are you know custom to do something would allow them to create with the deployment files of their applications, also the policies, the security policy of the application, something that will allow it to simultaneously uh, get into action and take place. And once again, going back to you, Tomer, to show us how we can create policy as a code uh, and give developers the ability uh, to assume the responsibility for the runtime part. Thank you, Ariel. Yeah. Um, so let's see policy of the code. Okay, so back to our Argo CD um, deployer. So here we deployed the Nginx, and now for the second part, we want to deploy a policy on the Nginx. So we defined another application, another Argo CD application called Nginx policy, in which we'll configure and control 
the Nginx deployment policy. So this policy file is basically a Kubernetes object, a CLD object, which defines the rules, the network rules, and that controlling the communication of the deployment. So let's see how this object looks like. So here we have our application, our automated policy object. So we have the deployment name. In our case, it's Nginx. And we can see who this deployment can talk to and who can talk to this deployment. So we can see, so for this, in, for example, uh, Nginx can communicate with our database and cannot communicate to external services, but uh, it can receive a connection from external services, but cannot receive connection from internal services. Uh, from, so once we deploy our application, the network policy, the connection policy in SecureCN will update it currently. So let's click on sync and synchronize this app to our environment. And now we can see that um, this app was synced, so it was synced. So we can jump back to the SecureCN console and we head to the policy, then the connection rules, and click refresh. So in the policies and the connection rules, we can see that two new rules were created. So the first one is a connection from external environment can communicate with Nginx, and Nginx can communicate with the database. And we can easily differentiate between this rule, this automated automatically created rule and the user created rule by hovering over the connection rule and see the icon. And in addition to that, on any change that we would make to the uh, Git repository, any update or any delete will automatically um, affect and update the connection rules here in SecureCN. Thank you, Tomer, for this great demo. Uh, and I think it's really now we can wrap it up and summarize everything. And the idea here in this session, what we want to talk about is the importance of shifting security left. We can get, you know, a higher level of security, shorter remediation time, much higher efficiency. And of course, doing it before uh, the trouble happens or before the risk is, exists. Now, adding security checks to development and automation cycles, whether it's you know in the CI or the CD pipeline, is the good approach and the right approach forward. But to really shift left, uh, you need also to consider the runtime, where the critical elements happen or where the critical uh, risks occur. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we showed here our suggestion for policy as a code, is the approach that we can get the policy just like any other code let developers write it, let developers craft it, update, modify it, and automatically apply it uh, or see these changes when they happen. And this is the demo we try to show, that we show you. Uh, we hope you enjoy the, the session today. Thank you very much uh, and looking forward to see you again. Bye-bye.